This being my first Fallout 3 challenge, I decided to make this a hard one, as I tried to find out, can you beat Fallout 3 with only objects from Megaton. With that, I was born onto this world, made myself look like an alien, mum died, and I chose my special stats. Spreading them out fairly, even making sure to have an 8 in endurance, as I didn't think I would have that much in the way of protection. It was then my birthday, where I was given my pit bull, and Liam Neeson forced me to go shoot him. With the section where you shoot the rad roach with the BB gun, impossible to skip without staying as a baby for the whole run, I chose to shoot it as I didn't particularly want to find out how to beat Fallout 3 as a baby. It was then time for class where I took the goat choosing my tag skills, melee weapons as I did not expect to find many bullets in Megaton, lockpick so I could access all the supplies in Megaton and small guns being practically pointless but helping out when I did find a gun. It was then time for me to escape the vault, which was just me wildly jumping around, until I escaped. So using this time I will briefly explain the rules for this run. I can only use things I can find in Megaton, and I won't allow any bartering as I believe that would not be very good for the run, as I could just buy an OP weapon straight away. However, I will allow Moira to repair my gear durability and the Doctor in Megaton to heal me with me also using something else in Megaton, which leaves debate for the rules, but we will get to that later. Reaching the overseer's room, I ran around for a while, dodging the guard who followed me there. Eventually getting the escape passage open, I dived in and ran straight out of the vault. Heading straight for Megaton, as it was just right in front of me, I immediately got to work stealing everything, from the water plant and crate side supply, that I could get my grubber little hands on. Also stealing the armoured vault suit from Moira, somehow not getting caught, Luckily, as it would be my only source of armour for the whole run. One of the first things I thought once I entered Megaton was to get Mr. Burke to kill Lucas Sims, as that was one of the few things I actually know about the game. So putting this plan into action, I spoke with Burke, getting the pulse charge off of him, then immediately handed it over to Sims. With this, he charged over to the saloon and confronted Mr. Burke. As soon as Sims' back was turned, Mr. Burke shot him. With Sims now dead, I was able to take my reward taking his Chinese assault rifle and his outfit. The assault rifle only had a 13 bullets however, so I continued scourging. Mr. Burke also confronted me afterwards, which wasn't terrifying. Going over to Lucas's house, with my newly acquired key I gained entry, finding both the strength bubble head and what would become the best weapon in my, at my disposal during this run, the sledgehammer. Trust me when I say this was a real life sailor, as I now had a melee weapon that could take me through the entire game. After this, for some reason, Stopping off at the doctor's house, forgetting the fact that I could use him to heal me, I shot his head off. This being a major oversight on my part, and this would come back to bite me later in the run. Nevertheless, I still stole everything inside of his house, including all the healing supplies and stim packs, selling most of the things I collected throughout Megaton to the various vendors around, and obviously not buying back anything, mind you, as this would, in my eyes, fail the run. With me now feeling good about my situation, I headed for the subway station, where I was greeted with some mole rats, which were quite fine to take care of. On the other hand, the ghouls were my issue. Due to their, their tanky nature, and my lack of an ability to dish out enough damage, they annihilated me. Going through too many of my healing supplies that I was comfortable with, I dipped out from there. Deciding to skip the section at GNR, and heading straight to Rivet City. Finding Grandma Sparkles along the way, I promptly killed her. Finding Rivet City, I then immediately fast travel back to Megaton for one very specific reason that I had just remembered. Collecting even more items from around Megaton, with a couple of murders sprinkled in there for good measure, this all making me level up, where I got the Little League of Perk. I won't be talking about every time I level up much, due to it mostly only going into melee skills and endurance. After a while of looting and selling items, I finally reached a thousand cap. With my newfound wealth, I head over to Moriarty Saloon to acquire the best weapon in Megaton. Thanks to all my low karma from stealing all the loot, I gave him the caps and Jericho was mine. Now, I can already hear people in the comments screaming, this, not sh this should not be a part of the rules. But, I make the rules, Jericho is inside Megaton. To me, that means he is viable for the run. If you believe this makes me fail the challenge, Feel free to dislike. Now with my newly brought friend by my side, I returned to Rivet City and inquired to Madison about my father. She told me of Project Perry. The mutants inside were a pushover, with the combined forces of me and Jericho, with me knocking at their knees, 
and Jericho unloading into them with his assault rifle, we made our way through very easily, not even having trouble with the brute in the rotunda, him going down as quickly as the others. Finding the holotapes, I learned of my father's location, making sure to clear out the whole building beforehand, we went on our way. By now having gone through a significant amount of my healing supplies, and not wanting to use that many of them, I returned to Megaton and had a date with a sink. This being my lifeblood, further on in the run. Now making our, our way to the garage, Jericho's bloodlust came through, as he made sure to put down anything that came even remotely close to us, him seemingly having a personal vendetta against mole rats, killing them instantaneously. Going into the garage, he continued this and we reached the vault, but I again failed the run, having to put on the vault suit, so I could go into tranquility lane. Knowing there was no way around this, unless I want to just go straight to little lamplight, that would, I don't feel like that would make a fun run, so I continued anyway. With that, I went into the simulation, instead of even talking to the crazy overseer cosplaying a little girl, I immediately set loose the Chinese and was out of there. Returning with Liam Neeson, I told him to go back to Rivet City, where I followed him. Then speaking to the scientists, and we all headed over to Project Plurity. Having cleared it out earlier, I could just complete all my tasks, going down into the pipes, and Leon came, came a knock in. Whipping out my metal pipe, I found earlier, I began beating the Enclave soldiers, which was actually fairly easy, as I had only only slightly abused by their leaders, with them being very low HP due to people rushing the story. So overall, it was not that difficult. It was then a very sad occasion as I watched my father die. Leaving the rotunda, Madison was actually useful as she picked up a laser rifle and shot at an enclave soldier. Following this, me and the scientist then fled into the sewer, where I immediately killed them all except Madison, just for the hell of it. And it was then at this point where I realised Jericho disappeared. This not being the end of the world though, I only meaning I had to use up the rest of my ammo on the ghouls, who were again very tanky. And by this point, I lost most of my healing supplies, so I was in a constant state of my head being covered, which was delightful. Running past the rest of the ghouls into the loving arms of the Brotherhood, I reached the Citadel, I then could return to Megaton and continue my love affair with the Sink. Afterwards, returning to the Citadel, Rothschild told me of the whereabouts of the Gek, that being Roll 87. Going to Megaton, I murdered some more people in my anger over losing Jericho. Repaired my sledgehammer with Moira, I remembered he could be at the saloon. So waiting around for outside for a while, sure enough, he showed up. Which was a rather large relief for me, as I didn't trust my odds against the army of supermutants on my own. On our way to Little Lamplight, Jericho was as bloodthirsty as ever, killing everything and everyone in our way. Reaching Little Lamplight, having made sure to take the child at Harper, Mega McCready let me in. Letting us down into Murder Pass, where me and Jericho slowly and methodically fought our way to the vault, killing all the mutants in our way. I also wasted all my ammo here, as I wanted to save the durability of my sledgehammer as much as possible, switching to the pipe once I had run out of ammo. I laid into the mutants, with Jericho as my backup. At this point, I completely ran out of stim packs, so annoyingly I had to turn tail and run before entering the vault. Returning to Megaton, I made love with the sink once again. Unfortunately, I could not heal my crippled head, so that persisted. If you wonder why the video randomly goes blurred. Returning to Little Lamplight, I ran through both it and Murder Park, reaching the vault once again. Inside the vault was easier than I initially thought it was going to be. Even without Jericho's help, the normal mutants would go down a few hits. So with Jericho's help, we turned the mutants into blood spurs all over the place. Finding Forks deeper in the vault, I released him, as I had nothing in the way of rad protection, so I needed him to get the gig for me. Releasing him with the fire alarm. It was then a just a matter of following him, both him and Jericho to the gate as they cleared the way for me. Forks then collected the gate for me and I was kidnapped by the Enclave. Even though Jericho would have just been right behind me, I guess he decided to take his leave on this moment. So that's great. Nevertheless, I then woke up at Raven Rock, collected my belongings, finding out my only piece of armour was broken. So that not being very good, as I had barely any HP left from the fight with inside Vault 87, so, with no way to heal, this did not help the matter. I attempted to get past the soldiers, getting to the second level, but one blew my head off. I then concluded it was impossible for me to make it past. So sadly, I had to save scum the speech check with the officer outside the cell, so that the enclave guards on the first floor wouldn't attack me. 
With this eventually working, I was able to make it up to the second floor without being shot, until Autumn told them to shoot me again. Being blown up and shot a couple of times, I finally made it to the loving arms of President Eden's sentry bots as they blew off the young slave soldiers standing around me. I went up and had my conversation with him. I agreed to help him poison Project Fury. Taking the modified FEV while siding with him also making my way out much easier as I had the assistance of his turrets and sentry bots. Making my way all the way to the exit only having trouble with the enclave soldiers who were guarding the door and the one with the rocket and the one with the gatling laser. Being blown up by the one with the rocket multiple times I was eventually able to slip past where I greeted Fawkes and told him to go away. Returning to Megaton I then made love with the sink at once again but this time accidentally stealing something making everyone hostile. So loading back to Ravenrock I tell Fawkes to bugger off again and make a trip to Megatown one final time, this time making love with the water fountain, collecting Jericho from the saloon, and we left for the citadel. Watching the cutscene, I then refused the armour from Sierra, going going into the battle naked, it was then time to go for a walk with Liberty Prime. I can now see why people get so fr frustrated following Liberty Prime, as he walks incredibly, incredibly slowly to the memorial. For me, he got stuck on the bridge. Luckily, this only happened once as I reloaded and we got to the memorial without running into any issues. With me skulking behind Prime as he took out all the enclave, he broke down the barrier. I was able to make it to the door of the memorial. And then my game crashed. Luckily, having saved on the bridge just before Prime broke down the barrier, I was able to reload and would not have enjoyed following Prime again. Getting into the memorial this time without the game crashing, me, Jericho, and Sierra killed the enclave outside the rotunda quickly and efficiently, beating them br all up brutally. Reaching the rotunda, I initiated the attack on Colonel Autumn, beating him till his lime exploded. Reaching just a sliver of health, I let Jericho and Sierra finish the soldiers. Deciding to turn the purifier on myself, I slipped in the FEV vial, put in the code, and with that I sadly proved you cannot beat Fallout 3 with only items from Megaton. Even though I could not complete this challenge, I did however enjoy this run as it was my first time actually beating Fallout 3. If you would like me to make more videos on this, leave your feedback in the comments. And with that, I hope you enjoyed. Consider liking and subscribing, leaving a comment for, for any suggestions of future runs, and I'll see you next time.